Welcome, whiskey fam, to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. Man, I've been excited to do this for quite some time. When Knob Creek started throwing out some 12 year and some 15 year together in some special packaging, I knew, all right, I had to get these and at some point crack into them and taste them side by side. And although I've been dragging my feet, I've certainly been seeing some people share their thoughts and feelings on that. And so now it's my turn. So stick around. All right, so Knob Creek Bourbon. Now, if you haven't already heard, Knob Creek is made by Jim Beam Distilleries. And they're pretty much, uh, I hate to say this, but they're pretty much the stepson to the Booker's Bourbon. Now, Booker's Bourbon is pretty much the premium of the premium when it comes to their Jim Beam products. And for whatever reason, Knob Creek is very good, super affordable, and I guess it just doesn't make the cut to be as good as Booker's. Um, I have some qualms with that, especially the assumptions that this is not as good, because I can tell you that side by side, it definitely gives it a run for its money, and there are times when I prefer the Knob Creek over the Booker's. Booker's has been marketed a lot. It's a very fancy and premium type of bottle. And just to show you the difference between these and a Booker's, um, if you've ever seen any of my previous videos, I've actually done a Booker's side-by-side -side comparison. And it's just a nice, beautiful, you know, wooden box. It features Booker No right on the back. And within the front, it's got nice little clear plexiglass that you can open and get to your nice fancy bottle. Well, they've done the same thing for the 15-year Knob Creek. And I think this is the first time that they've ever featured a Knob Creek that's just as old. I know that uh, they have the 20 and the 25-year, of course, but this is especially unique. This is the 15-year, and I'm really just excited to be tapping into this. So this will be a fresh uncorking for both, and, um, you know, I think it's just a really good deal of marketing. But I will tell you that Knob Creek overall, it's just a good quality and very approachable and affordable type of bourbon. All right, guys. So we got the 12 year and the 15 year ready to be on court. So without further ado, let's tap into these, shall we? Now, this is a bit messy and it's probably not my favorite part of the Knob Creek. Uh, quite a bit of wax there, but good juice nonetheless. Mmm, uh, man, oh man, this is going to be a beauty. So we got the 12 year here, and now the 15. Oh, that was a nice little unwaxing there. Ooh, a little bit more of a robust sound there. I can tell you the nose on this one is a little bit more vanilla and creamier on the, on the aroma. Man, I am excited to try these out side by side. I'm going to start off with the nose, of course. Got the 12 here in this hand and the 15 in this one. One thing I like to do is just give a little light swirl. Let that whiskey juice just sort of coat the inside of the glass. Helps to sort of open it up, oxidize it without it being like super agitated, right? Where if you agitate it too harshly, what ends up happening is you get this like alcohol punch in the face. So it's just a nice little swirl. I'll go ahead and do that with both. Just kind of a, a tip if you're going to drink whiskey neat. All right, going back to the 12. It's a bit spicy. Um, feels sort of like a high rye. A lot of oak, a lot of cinnamon. You get some kind of like burnt toffee. 
some black tea notes there. Man, and a good amount of vanilla. It just needs a little time to sort of settle down after it's been poured and swirled, of course. Mmm. I almost think of this like a, like a little bit of a Coca-Cola, if you will. If you've ever smelled Coca-Cola syrup, that's what this comes off like. It's probably that like black tea and, you know, like that molasses and caramel. Mmm. So the 12-year, beautiful on the nose. I'd say it's got a good amount of spice, like I said, and it is oaky. Now for the 15. You know, another tip that I'll give you guys is when you're kind of diving into that nose, uh, when you breathe it in, it's, it's probably a good um, bit of advice to not keep your mouth closed all the way. Have it like sort of slightly open and breathe it in through your nose as well as your mouth. That way it gets all in your palate. And it'll help from like burning the nostril too if you ever have like a high proof type of whiskey that you're trying out. Wow, so on the 15 year, which is surprising, it feels more creamy um, than the 12, right off the bat. A lot of the, the notes and the character that I got from the 12 is on the 15, but surprisingly not as spicy. Let's swirl around just a little bit more. This feels like more caramel, more uh, Vanilla, almost like a creme brulee, if you will. Not as much cinnamon, and definitely not as oaky as the 12. Which is shocking, because you got three more years spent in that barrel, right? Just sort of maturing and resting. Who knows, maybe it just got more time to mellow. Um, but when it comes to bourbon, especially Kentucky straight bourbon, you know, the longer it sits in that barrel, it may not come out... Um, you know, not as sharp, right? It, it may not come out as mellow. Um, so it's a bit surprising that the 15 year is as creamy and buttery on the nose. Again, a lot of the things that I got out of the 12 year I get here, cola, black tea, but it's feeling a lot more like vanilla and creamier on the nose, a lot more caramel. So when it comes to trying different bourbons uh, lately, I will admit I'm a bit of a slacker, especially when it comes to like Knob Creek and Booker's. Um, funny, not so funny. I have this running collection of Booker's. I try to get all the different releases year after year. And uh, when I say that I'm a slacker, I'm not joking. I have a bunch of different Booker's that I have not even tapped into. Uh, Kind of shameful really because it's such really good whiskey and uh, at some point I'm probably gonna have to do like this whole family lineup of the bookers that I have I have some going back to 2015 that I haven't tried yet so but uh, as far as the Knob Creek man I'm really excited again for trying these side by side I, I really like the marketing and the packaging part of it when you have a Knob Creek uh, or a bookers you just know that you have something special in your hand um, you know, this is like a quintessential bourbon. All right, so let's get a taste here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Oh, that's good. Mm, that's good. Okay. <laughs> the 12 here is superb. Nutty, vanilla, spicy though. This has got a whole batch of cinnamon packed into this bottle. But it's like uh, cinnamon sticks, like sort of this dry type of spice. And I really, really like that. 50%. Um, ABV, you're feeling every bit of this. It's got a good amount of heat. Let me go back to that taste though. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming back to it. 
that black tea note really starts to get up front. Good amount of caramel, of course, and just a light amount of vanilla. But again, it's, it's feeling uh, spicy. Not like aggressive necessarily, kind of kicking you around or something like that at the party, but it's got a good amount of like cinnamon and cola. Um, nice little balance. It's got a bit of a dry type of finish, but it's long and lingering. Um, and of course you get a good amount of oak. So I think what I'm gonna do before I dive into this 15 year is cleanse the palate with a little water. All right, so let's dive in. I'm really eager and excited to try this one. It's kind of a new one for me, so cheers. Okay, definitely getting something very different on the 15. Cherry cola, lots and lots of cherry, vanilla, not as spicy, definitely less cinnamon than the 12 year. And there's a good amount of like toasted oak, if you will, on this, like seasoned oak, baking spices, dark chocolate, if you will, and it's nutty. A lot of uh, Jim Beam products tend to have like this nutty character to them. Um, in particular, this feels like, like a peanut. Um, so I'm going to take one more sip. And if you haven't noticed, I'm just letting this whiskey sort of dance around my tongue coat that palate. I'm trying to get as much out of it as I can, right? Man, this packs a little bit of heat, just not as much as the 12 year, for whatever reason. Maybe a different part of the Rick House, you know, maybe uh, different, you know, it's had more time to sort of mellow a little bit. And maybe just overall different oak, different wood. Man, this feels very nice. I would say the 15 year is more approachable than the 12 year. If you're new to bourbon, if you're new to whiskey, um, this is going to be sort of this thing that throws you off. You're going to probably hear a lot of times that, you know, the older a whiskey gets, it tends to be a little bit more rounded and mellow. When it comes to bourbon, especially like bourbon from Kentucky, especially in that climate where it has these huge shifts, hot and cold, that whiskey's breathing in and out. Sometimes it could become like tannic, very oaky, almost like too oaky or too oak forward. And me personally, I don't like, you know, tasting whiskey that feels like I'm licking a stave. Kind of a turnoff, right? I'm probably not going to go back to that bottle anytime soon. For some people, they love that stuff. But me, personal preference, I'm not into it. With this 15 year, I, I almost think it was like the perfect amount of time in there, honestly. The 12 year... This is going to really capture a different kind of market. Those that like them a little bit more spicy. If you're like a huge fan of rye, I think you're probably going to want to reach out for this 12 year versus the 15. This feels a little bit more buttery and creamy and not as spicy. I will just tell you that. It's kind of the one thing that's standing out. That and the fact that this has a lot more cherry. And I didn't really get very much cherry on the 12 year. So I'm going to take one more sip, give you my final thoughts. You know, for me, um, when I come across a good whiskey, I tend to like to let that thing dance. Dance a little bit more, hang out, stay on the palate, let it ruminate. Because the flavors just sit there and they get into the tongue, they get into the roof of the palate. Mm. This 15 year is very, very good. I really like it. Uh, the interesting thing about 
what I get out of it is I've seen several different people say on Instagram, talk about how the 15 year is very oaky. That's not what I'm getting here. And again, I'm tasting this against the 12 year, which should feel probably a little bit more mellow, not as oaky, but no, this 15 year is my favorite out of the two. As far as getting your hands on this stuff, I am still seeing the 15 year on the shelf, the 12 year as, as well. Now what you're gonna come across the most is the nine year or the small batch or the single barrel or the barrel select. And those are just as good, I will tell you that. But you know, every Knob Creek has its own story to tell, if you will. And for me, I'm just happy that I got a chance to try these side by side. And I think the next time I do a video on these guys, I'm gonna compare it head to head with the Booker's. I really just wanted to focus on what's so different between a 12 and a 15 year type of Jim Beam product. And now I know, this is great. So if you get a chance, get them both. Uh, the one thing that I will mention is the affordability of Knob Creek. I just am really shocked that nowadays when you're going for something fancy, something of high quality, good caliber type of whiskey, you're gonna shell out probably 90 bucks, 80, maybe even as high as like 120 and 130 these days. And I will tell you, bourbon is bourbon and bourbon is American. You really shouldn't have to spend that kind of cheddar on an American type product. Now, when it comes to say scotch, I'm not saying scotch is deserving of spending that much, but you understand why. You know, the shipping down here, it's an international type of product. And honestly, most scotch is aged for a very long time. They usually have to sit on it minimum 10, 12, 15 years anyway. But when it comes to bourbon, you do not need that much time in the barrel to get what you need and put that bad boy in a bottle. But I'm really glad that Knob Creek is still very affordable. It's very accessible. You can pretty much always see Knob Creek on the shelf. And for now, you can still see these both. And um, I definitely recommend it. So if you get a chance, you know, don't hold back, get it. It's really not as expensive as other like premium type of bourbons. So do it, it's a no brainer. All right, so final thoughts. Well, when it comes to the 12 year, I'm gonna give this a good 4.5 out of five. A good moderate amount of complexity, very approachable, a good amount of heat. And I think that if I had to talk to a couple of friends and figure out who to pour what, I would give this to my spicy friends, right? Those that really like them spicy and bold, I'd give the 12 year. For those that don't like them as spicy, I'm gonna offer them the 15 year because I think that you know, the 12 year is a bit spicy, a, a whole lot of cinnamon, and they would probably appreciate this a whole lot more. This one, I'm gonna give it a leg up. 4.75 out of a five. Although I do like them like to pack some heat, to be robust. I just felt like this was a little bit more well-rounded, had just as much complexity, hell, a little bit more. And so I, this is gonna get my, my choice out of the two. Uh, they both get a thumbs up. And as far as priceability, the 12 year, I was able to get this for about 60 bucks US. And for this, I saw it as high as 120 in some stores, but I waited. Um, and I'm glad I waited because I was able to get this for about 80. Um, I don't know if there was a, a sale, they were trying to get rid of it, but I was able to get it for 80. And again, for $120, I don't recommend it. That's some sort of second retailer type of price not a fan of that so if you can get it for a good amount a good price do so okay this is a no-brainer one thing i do want to mention is we've been very active on instagram and facebook so if you haven't already give us a follow check us out there because i continue to post reviews on whiskey different agave spirits and barrel aged beers those are like my three favorite things to try and share it with all of you guys that are ambassadors. Even though I've been slacking on YouTube, I have not slacked one bit on Instagram. So I highly encourage you to check us out there. But as far as the YouTube channel, we really appreciate you guys stopping by. Show us some love, hit that like button. If you have a whiskey, an agave spirit, 
or even a barrel-aged beer that you would like us to feature next and share with you, drop a comment and let us know what's up. So thanks for stopping by on the channel. And always remember, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers.